How's it going guys? John D here. So I've actually gotten some questions about the custom radio that I have in my Johto map and I figured I might as well make a video on it to show you guys what's been going on behind the scenes with it. So uh, so the radio, for those that don't know, uh, this specific version is based off the Poke Gear from second generation. Um, it has a bunch of different stations that you can tune into and right now I have it set to route specific music which I think is what most people are going to be interested in. Um, and this also works in the offhand, which is why there's a little radio icon right there that you can fill. And I'll go ahead and show you all how it works. So pretty much everything about the radio is custom. This is most of the commands for it. And I'll walk you guys through what happens whenever you actually start listening to it uh, for like the main route music. Uh, so what you do when you throw it in, your, in the correct slot, it will go ahead and run this test for command, which is searching for inventory. So music cooldown, it's searching for a score of zero. Music cooldown is simply a dummy score that is set whenever a song is tripped, so it will repeat as soon as the song is done. And then it's also searching for your NBT data of inventory slot negative 106B, which is your offhand, and then tag display radio. So literally anything named radio would work, but uh, this is sp specifically a carrot on a stick, and I'll go into more of that later. Uh, but what it does when it finds that is it goes into this command here and it sets my score of music state uh, to one. So it's also searching for a score of music state equals zero, which just ensures that I am currently, I have the score of zero, but I'm looking for the score of one. So I get the score of one and it runs on the same slot tags as before, the same ND, NBT data. And then when I go away, when, it go, when the radio goes into uh, another hand, it'll go ahead and set my music state score back to zero. So that just ensures that people that aren't currently looking for the radio don't get music played. And then what happens from there is it runs into these two commands. So this one is specifically for offhand. So this is these basically do the exact same thing. They're both test fours, cooldown zero, and then it's looking for those inventory slots. So this one's the offhand specifically, and then this one works the pretty much the same way in the second slot. So I basically went with different stations for different things. So like this is a this is a blank station. Slot four is lucky number show, that kind of stuff. So let's just stick with offhand for now. Um, it runs into um, a bunch of different commands and they're actually ordered in order of priority. So the first thing that will happen is it'll try and see if you have a bicycle tag. And a bicycle tag is basically you are just riding on a Pixelmon bike, and it'll play specific music to that. That'll work anywhere in the map, so it works specifically over any kind of rap music as opposed to um, music like that. So. so this kind of layered music basically works off of the concept that these command blocks will execute on the exact same tick, and then it'll go on to other areas. So the higher priority areas will be targeted first, and those higher priority targets can be indoors. So game quarters inside of uh, Goldenrod. Uh, you have Cinnabar Island, which is inside of some water routes, is what I did. Olivine Lighthouse, obviously inside of Olivine. Dance Theater, Eurotique, etc. And it basically goes through, and then you have full-on routes, and then you have cities and all that kind of stuff so uh, let's go ahead and show you some of these commands so let's go with elms lab as an example we'll open it up and it starts attempting to play this sound play sound elm lab record and then these are the exact coordinates of the lab so this is why it's all custom baked in you pretty much have to get the coordinates yourself and set all of them uh, in proper proper target selectors and then you have also targets for a score, or a score of music cooldown zero, which makes it so other people aren't go going to get it. And then music state one. And then it goes ahead and plays it exactly at where you are. That's what those tildes are. A thousand is volume and radius. So some routes are ridiculously large and I don't want the music fading as you walk around it. So I just set it to a thousand because I don't think any routes go above a thousand. One, one i think those are just speed and pitch if i remember correctly and then it goes on uh, so with the chain command it um specifically takes it from the input of 
the repeating command. So then it executes a scoreboard, players set, exact same coordinates, music cooldown, music state. All those are identical. Basically, the target selectors are identical. Music cooldown, and then a number. The number is basically the length of the song in seconds times 20. So every time I get on, let's see, I have a bike over here. Every time I'm playing a song, now it's starting to count down, and you can see this all went away because I currently have a music cooldown score that is above zero. So every single tick, I am being removed a score of one. So this basically will spam the console a lot, but it ensures that the length is roughly the same and it doesn't it's not susceptible to as much lag as say these hopper clocks are which is why i went with the more spammy method instead of trying to calculate it based on how frequently the hopper clocks refresh and all that kind of stuff so it makes it a little bit easier to to go and you can really use any kind of target selectors if you really want to so i also um, have tags in here for gym leaders so it's specifically looking for entities named blue that are Pixelmon NPCs, and then it's giving that, uh, then it'll start start playing some battle music whenever I'm near them. And it also works similarly with Silver, your rival. So if I go ahead and just inch it, there we go. So each uh, Silver has a different, uh, not each Silver, uh, but the different types of Silver have different musics. So this one is the NPC encounter where you don't actually battle them. And then you have your rival battle music. So if I go over here and initiate the rival battle, maybe inch here, there we go. And this lag's kind of natural. Unfortunately, I it's just a quirk with Minecraft. But yeah, so you have different, um, these are trainers. These are just chatting NPCs. So the reason the item is a retextured carrot on a stick is because it adds in customizability for the player and for map makers. So the way, um, if you right-click, it'll restart the song. And that is only possible because it's an item that is actually able to be right-clicked using this specific criteria. It's stat, use item, Minecraft, carrot on a stick. And doing that will allow you to, um, in this case, I bound it to a score of click, is what the uh, scoreboard name is. And that allows me to just trigger that on a person whenever I want their music to reset, so if they walk into a different area, like so, um, right over the uh, little start area here, and then if I fly back over to the lobby, I can go ahead and click myself, and then reset it. And it also helps if something like plays twice, or if music starts to overlap because of initial lag, that kind of stuff, so. I think it's really helpful. Um, basically, all it does when you click is it tests for um, it basically just runs a stop sound on you, only if you have a score minimum of one. So you can keep clicking it all you want, um, and if it goes above one, it'll still do it. Uh, and then it'll stop sound, set your score of music cooldown to zero, and then set your click back to zero. So. so fun fact with this, with Pixelmon NPCs, you are able to run scoreboard tags on them based on very specific target selectors. So if I go ahead and Pokespawn... Uh, let's go a Suicune. That's a pretty good staple of this. And then if I right-click anywhere near it, basically what the redstone did in the background was it targeted a Pixelmon named Suicune. That is wild. And I can show that NBD, NBT data in a second. But it targets it in the wild, and then the radio will start playing the legendary music that is near it. So it won't work on Pokemon that aren't wild. Where'd it go? It's nearby. There it is. So now you have music that is near any kind of legendary and they're all uh, custom in. And actually Arceus even has its custom own. If I can even spell my own favorite Pokemon's name. Uh, if I go ahead and right click, now it's uh, cooldown zero and now it's targeting entities named Arceus. Those are in one of the highest priorities. So they'll happen anywhere above routes and stuff like that, so. I, I just really like Arceus' theme. That's kind of why I wanted to play it. So it's in the uh, similar way to NPCs. So I believe right here is all the legendary sections. So it's searching for, um, it's executing on me. And that is just ensuring it's not trying to execute on every single Pokemon, every single hopper clock. 
uh, and then it limits it to a radius of 15. So it only applies to Pokemon that are within a radius of 15 of you. And then it's, it's uh, running a scoreboard tag. So scoreboard players tag at E, radius 15, type equals Pixelmon, Pixelmon. So that's specifically if it is only the Pixelmon entity. And then tag not legendary. So it's not going to run it twice on the same Pokemon. And then it'll add the tag legendary. And right here you have the data for the Pokemon. So index is your national dex Pokemon number. I can't remember what 380 is off the top of my head, but uh, it's one of the legendaries. And then you have owner UUID, which is specifically how you target wild Pokemon. So that number will be filled if that Pokemon is a trainer's. So I don't want you to be listening to legendary battle music if your your friends walking around with their Suicune and you, you can't really help it. So that's kind of how that works. Um, and then any legendary musical play, it's custom with Arceus 2, I believe. Yeah, so Arceus battle is its own specific tag, but it works in the exact same way. Pixelmon, not tag Arceus battle, add Arceus battle, and then it, it's only targets index Arceus. So. That's a similar way to uh, how the gym leaders work. So it's specifically just looking for Pixelmon NPCs named Faulkner, named Bugsy, Whitney, etc. There are different commands in there specifically for every single gym leader. And then it just gives them the gym leader tag, which is basically the entire target criteria. So instead of any coordinates, you have tags, and those are run in the second priority. So uh, bicycle music trumps all. But yeah, that's essentially how the uh, radio works. So all of these are basically just for different areas that are basically hard coded. You pretty much have to go and make all those coordinates yourself. But I think it's really cool. I think it's like, it's not simple, <laughs> which is kind of why I'm explaining it. But I think it's a pretty elegant solution for map makers, because especially if you're only using Pixelmon, this is all vanilla. This is 1.12 redstone, and it's really cool. And uh, let me go ahead and actually explain a little bit more. If you if you just want to leave and not hear about the other radio stations, then feel free. But um, I tie some of these into events. So the Pokey Flute, if I go ahead and play it here, this will play literally anywhere you are. It's not bound by any target selector. Um, Poke Flute is right here, so it's just testing for a different item slot. So it's in slot 7 now. It'll give me a score of Poke Flute, and then it'll start playing the Poke Flute, and then it'll give me that uh, music cooldown score. And then. Um, so this is actually tied into the Snorlax in Vermilion City. So let me fly on over there. Let me give myself the score first. Yep, so say we're just um, walking along here. Look at that uh, polygonal mess of <laughs> a Snorlax model. Uh, but the Pokey Flute, if you switch it on over to slot 8 and then go ahead and play it, it'll start to do in-game events. So right now it's testing for anywhere in between a music score of a pretty wide range, just so it doesn't miss it. But then, after it gets to a certain point, it'll go ahead and trip a Snorlax, and it cleared barriers and all that stuff, so now you can battle the Snorlax. Lucky Number Show is basically one of the shows that you could tune into on Crystal. Uh, basically, it encouraged you to go and get your Pokemon checked for their specific IDs, and it just plays the same tune over and over again. Mysterious Transmission is kind of like a uh, area-specific thing. I think it's to the Ruin of Alp that just plays some weird music. Uh, Buena's Password. This one is also um, another kind of event thing. So I got a Buena's Password item because she gives you a password. <laughs> and then you go and see her and she'll give you an item every day. And then right here, all of the commands for it. So um, Pokemon music is a specific tune for the day of the week. So right now it is Tuesday. So we're having a Poco Lullaby. I just noticed time's not changing. So in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, there's a feature called Pokemon music. And it basically integrates with 
Sinnoh and Hoenn sounds. So if I go ahead and just let this go away. By the way, the lullaby, if I go into game mode two, will give you a complimentary repel um, every day that it's active. And then every day it cycles between a different song. So today is the polka lullaby and the day is about to change. As soon as it, as soon as the sun's all the way down, the day will change. And we're gonna get some cool nostalgic gen three. Yeah, gen three is on Wednesday. Gen 4 is on Thursday. Sinnoh sounds. So this ties into a day of the week counter. So I essentially just have a bunch of daylight detectors around the map. This one specifically uh, detects when the sun is all the way down and that's when it sets a day. So it adds a score of weekday to a global scoreboard command. Uh, and then this will reset some things and go into these checkers here so let's go ahead day's about to go out so there we go the day is now changed so it switched out from Tuesday to Wednesday and if I go ahead and click here we got us uh, some nostalgic first route Hoenn sound and so essentially in those giant chain of commands uh, this gets changed out so everything gets set to glowstone and the specific day of the week gets changed so wednesday gets um, added there and as you can see similar to snorlax uh, pokemon will spawn with the hoenn and Sinnoh sounds so if you listen to that on uh, wednesdays and thursdays random pokemon from those generations will spawn oh we got a cute little makuita look at its ears move are those ears or is that just a bandana um, but yeah, here we have, I believe, Hoenn Sound, so yeah, it fills it all in with Glowstone, so the previous days will be erased, and then it sets a block that can conduct Redstone Current, which is pretty much all this does. And then, depending on the day of the week, um, it'll go ahead and execute whatever sound is currently going on that day, and whatever kind of effects. So yeah, that's the radio! It's pretty versatile, I'd say. Um... <laughs> I hope you guys learned something. Um, if you have any questions or you uh, want me to explain anything else in this giant sea of command blocks that is the Johto spawn, feel free to let me know in the comments and uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Are those ears? Does Makuita have ears? <laughs>